This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Ex-boyfriend in fetal bogwalk gorge crash to be charged. The police have again taken into custody 33-year-old Vincent Dunn, the ex-boyfriend of 27-year-old Macadia Hudson, who was killed in a car crash. Hudson, who worked as a shipping agent at the Las Ocean Shipping Company, died in September when the car in which she and Don was traveling plunged into the Rio Cobra in the Bogwalk Gorge in St. Catherine. The police say Don is to be charged with attempting to pervert the course of justice and the breaches of the Disaster Risk Management Act. He was traveling in the gorge during curfew hours around 1 a.m. on Sunday, September 26. A post-mortem examination revealed that the St. Catherine woman had drowned. Hudson, who was the mother of a young son, lived at McGill Palms Estates. Bail extended for Sangster Airport's alleged drug quartet. The four Sangster International Airport employees who were arrested and charged in a drug bust last month are to remain on bail until January 31, 2022, when they are to reappear in the St. James Parish Court. Ramp attendant Tavon Murray, 28, and Romain Kerr, 35, as well as aviation security officer Berlani Reed, 23, and the security supervisor Indra Waite, 43, were caught allegedly trying to smuggle 11.4 kilograms of cocaine onto an aircraft. The flight was destined for Canada. The accused appeared before Parish Judge Sasha Ashley on Wednesday. Kerr is charged with a possession of a dealing in and exporting cocaine. Reed is charged with breaching the Civil Aviation Act and a conspiracy to export cocaine. Wade is charged with a conspiracy to export cocaine, possession of criminal property, and aiding and abetting while Murray is charged with conspiracy to export cocaine. Wade's attorney, Henry McCurdy, requested copies of several documents from the prosecution to prepare his client's defense. I am requesting all paperwork on the flight so we will need a manifesto and a baggage reclaim sheet, the security guard development sheet, the ramp agent deployment sheet, the CCTV footage for the aircraft, the estimated time of arrival and the departure time of the flight, and any other documents that would be able to assist us, McCurdy told the judge. In addition, Murray's lawyer, Michael Hemmings, made an application for his client's work ID card, which had been taken from him following his arrest, to be returned to him. It was subsequently disclosed that the card was in the custody of the airport authorities and it could be reclaimed from them. Meanwhile, the prosecution told the court that a number of statements have been requested from the authorities in Canada where the cocaine was reportedly discovered after the arrival of the flight are to be submitted for analysis. The forensic certificate and the CCTV footage are said to be outstanding. Murray, Kerr, Reed, and Wade were subsequently ordered to submit their fingerprints to the police before being allowed to leave the courtroom. According to the allegations, on October 10, the four defendants were servicing a Sunwing flight that was scheduled to depart the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay for the Toronto Pearson Airport in Canada. They reportedly conspired and placed a bag with 11.4 kilograms of cocaine valued at U.S. $570,000 or Jamaican $88.1 million on board the aircraft. The cocaine was allegedly intercepted at the airport in Canada, and one person was arrested in relation to the seizure. Following top-level investigations which involved the input of Jamaica's narcotics division, the four accused, who are all of St. James' addresses, were arrested and charged. NCB further delays a VAX or test policy. The National Commercial Bank has extended the suspension of its vaccine or test policy to next week, Friday, following a conciliatory meeting with its staff association and the Ministry of Labor and Social Security on Monday. The parties are expected to meet within two weeks to work out a solution to the company's new mandatory policy, which has been met with resistance by some staff members. NCB required that staff either take the COVID-19 vaccine or submit a weekly negative polymerized chain reaction test at their expense to the management of their unit. The bank said that in the event that an employee is unable to produce a current result, that employee will be unable to attend work. The company had said that the policy applied to both face-to-face -face 
and the remote employees. On Wednesday, Staff Association President Paul Stewart told the news that 80% of employees across the NCB group have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. It takes time. Some people don't make up their mind yet. We have said to them, unresponsibly if anything wrong with the staff, unreliable because of forcing this thing on them, Stewart said. Vaccine manufacturers have sought the passage of legislation indemnifying them against the civil litigation. Suggesting that hesitancy was not widespread, Stewart said that more than 400 people turned out at a recent vaccination drive at the bank's wellness center. So it's not a situation that people don't want to be vaccinated. Some of them are not ready. They have actually suspended the request for the test and virtually everything is on hold, he said. NCB first communicated the policy to staff in a circular on October 12. Employees were required to share their vaccination cards with the department heads by October 31 as proof that they were either partially or fully vaccinated. Land slippage fares linger in Hanover. Heavy rain that lashed western Jamaica between Sunday and Monday is expected to leave the Hanover Municipal Corporation with a hefty bill as a result of significant land slippages in four sections of the parish. Land slippages in the Bachelors Hall District, the hardest hit of the four affected areas, are likely to generate a hefty repair based on the significant scale of what unfolded in that community. According to Kenesha's tenant Dunbar, the disaster preparedness coordinator for Hanover, the land slippages sparked a flooding in some areas, but there was a quick runoff when the rain ceased. There were also reports of slippages in the vicinity of the Round Hill Hotel and the Villas Bamboo Drive on First Hill Road. Stennett Dunbar said there were no reported instances of major flooding in the parish, albeit the small amounts of surface water had gathered in some areas. The disaster preparedness coordinator said a detailed inspection will be done on the land slippage in Bachelors Hall to evaluate the possible impact it could have on nearby houses. Maroons accuse Curry of Taliban-style dictatorship but chief defends treaty powers. There is growing agitation in the Akampong town Maroon enclave in St. Elizabeth where some residents are up in arms over what they describe as the dictatorial style of Chief Richard Curry. They allege that persons close to the leader have been using verbal and physical attacks to repel any resistance to orders. After weeks of shimmering tension between loyalists of Curry and others critical of his leadership style, things reportedly came to a head on Saturday night when a man claimed he had been gone bought and stabbed because he was among a group of people who challenged an order from the chief to bring an end to a party that was in full swing. The injured man submitted videos and still photographs to the news showing wounds to his head, hands and feet. According to the man who asked that his identity not be revealed, he was attacked by men close to the chief. They attacked me because they saw me as the weak fence, said the injured man, adding that a silver gun was used to hit him in the face with an alleged enforcer threatening to shoot him. Maroon going on van and him take out his knife and stab me up, added the man, who is being urged by relatives to report the matter to the Jamaica Constabulary Force, but is seemingly concerned about further aggravating the situation as it is not Maroon custom. Last month, a video emerged on social media showing Curry attempting to shut off another unauthorized part in Okampong, with some residents taking a combative stance as the situation threatened to become confrontational. A female resident who said she supported Curry's ascension to the leadership of the Maroon community in February said that she now regrets supporting him, describing him as a dictator who is operating contrary to Maroon customs. Maroon Town is not Afghanistan, so you and your Taliban-style leadership is not going to work out, said the woman, who did not reveal her identity out of fear of retribution. While the news's efforts to reach Curry were futile, a public notice posted via his Twitter handle noted that a compound chiefs had a full power to inflict any punishment they think proper for crimes committed by their men among themselves. The November 8 tweet added, it has come out attention that in the course of their duties, members of our internal security detail were attacked by an individual known to the community to be of unsound demand in their peaceful attempt to bring to an end an event happening in the community. My administration is currently investigating the matter and whether or not excessive force was used. 
Alex Moore Minot, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Curry's administration, told the news that the man who claimed that he was attacked was a troublemaker. He said that the matter would have been referred to their public relations officer for a fulsome response. However, up to press time, the news had not received that response. Former Colonel Ferron Williams, who Curry succeeded just eight months ago, said that he is quite disturbed by some of the alleged going-ons, but Curry has spawned all his requests for dialogue. The people are not happy with his leadership style and some of the things he has been doing. I have tried to reach out to him many times, but he has not been receptive, said Williams. The residents no longer have a voice in what is taking place in the community. He is behaving like a dictator. Those who criticize him are subjected to verbal and physical attacks, which I understand is what happened on Saturday night at the former colonel. Williams said that he is also deeply concerned about the chief's seemingly antagonistic attitude towards the government of Jamaica and the police force, which he said is a major departure from the stance of previous Maroon leaders, at least two of whom also served in the GCF. A few months ago, the Akampong Maroons got into a kerfuffle with police officers who entered their community and tried to destroy a ganja farm. The police were challenged by the Maroons, who declared their actions illegal based on their interpretation of the 1838 treaty with the British government, which gives them sovereignty over their lands. The JCF defended its actions, saying that the cops were on official duty and had a right to enter the Maroon enclave, which is officially part of Jamaica and therefore under the jurisdiction of the police. Curry also made it clear that he did not need that permission of the Jamaican authorities to use any modern weapon to carry out his duties after the Firearm Licensing Authority launched an investigation into the circumstances in which the Maroon chief was seen with what appeared to be a shotgun strapped to his back during the confrontation with the police. The members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the members of the Firearm Licensing Authority are not elected by my people. In the cockpit country, we believe in democracy and the political freedom of the people, Curry said in a video. The matter was one of concern for Williams. When I heard about the incident where the police were driven out of Akampong and the chief's tough talk about confronting the government, it makes me sad because that is not how we used to operate. Akampong is still a part of Jamaica, and while we have certain rights, we are still a part of the Jamaican society, said Williams. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.